When I read The Covenant, I felt that it was a kind of a story that I hadn't seen in a long time. Rennie brought a shooting style to the film that I think heightened the story. It puts you in an environment that's so incredibly real. We try to take supernatural ideas, but tell them in an organic and in a real fashion. The special effects, the lighting, everything is just different. It's really, really scary and exciting, and you never know like what's around the corner. Ah! It's just a chance to be evil. Oh, trying to impress your date, huh? I guess I would call it a supernatural action thriller. Hi, I'm Rennie Harlan. Welcome to the set of The Covenant. Tonight, uh, here in Montreal, we are shooting a beach party rave sequence. What's important about this sequence is that this opens the whole movie, and we introduce pretty much all our main characters in this sequence. It's supposed to take place in the end of the summer, and of course, here we are in uh, end of October, and it's very cold, but we have a bunch of brave extras and a resilient crew. The aim is they'll all be going crazy, having a great time, uh, showing how it's done in New England in the end of the summer. Let's see if it works out the way I thought it will. Fire's up, smoke is up. Let's start rolling. Mark it and action. Cops are coming, cops are coming. Cut, cut, cut. That was fantastic. Awesome, awesome. We will change camera positions, get your jackets, get warm, and we will shoot more in just a matter of seconds. That was awesome. I needed great young actors who, of course, are good looking and look very different from each other because we are rapidly introducing five new characters to the audience in the beginning of the movie and you have to be clear that we can tell them apart. We didn't want to have really famous stars in the film because it is an ensemble piece and the concept of the movie is really the star in a way. My power is greater than yours. Not until you ascend. All right, go for it, tough guy. I knew Stephen for a couple years, and I think that Stephen Strait's about to be a movie star. So I brought him the attention of Rennie, so that's how sort of Stephen got there. So Stephen, you're 6'2"? Yes. And Laura, you are I read the script, and, and Caleb presented so many different dimensions and angles on his personality. <laughs> relationships with his mother and his father and with his girl. They're all completely different. That was very attractive to me to make a character that was so well-rounded. Action. You are just days away from us. Please, mother, I said stop it. Powers to do anything. And you will do it for her like you did it for me? No, I will never be here. Never. Stephen Strait is the most talented young man I've met in years and years. Not only is he breathtakingly attractive, he has a terrific sense of humor. What's great about working with, with young actors is that they are so eager and so excited and so passionate about what they are doing that you really get a lot from them and you get really great surprises and they'll never get tired of trying new things. We have some very athletic swimming scenes. The actors worked very hard in order to get into great shape and look really great on camera. And there were those moments where you see actors doing thousand sit-ups one day and, and eating only some apples. I feel very privileged being this is my first, first thing. It's unbelievable working with the cast. We have um, such chemistry even since day one. Like there's no egos on the set, no big personalities, you know, they're trying to assert themselves, and every guy is different and unique. And we're all from different places, too. And that's what I think it really is all about. We bring something different to the table with every character, and it shows in our character. 
there's just a sort of excitement that translates from their presence and their passion to the screen and their performances. Hey, you Throw you down. Three more, sir. Go. And three, two, one, action. We're going to study four American contemporary writers of fiction. First is Cormac McCarthy, then Tim O'Brien, Kent Aroof, and last but not least, Stephen King. Yeah, Dreamcatcher was the shit. <laughs> if I have an idea for a scene, then um, he'll let me jump right into it and then, you know, give me feedback. <gasps> oh, oh my God. Oh. I'm scare you. Oh. You just got back. Oh, sorry. I'm just a little freaked out. I felt like someone was watching me in the showers. He said, look, you can do what you want with him. He does a lot of different things in the film. As I said, he's having a good time, then, you know, he's being an asshole, but then he's being creepy, and, you know, I can do a lot of things with it. I think from the very early on, when they were able to see what kind of angles we were using in the shooting and how we were lighting the sets and how we were lighting them, they started understanding. We call it the world of the covenant. And every time when we're doing a scene, we will sort of check on ourselves and say, is this a covenant kind of a scene? Is this a covenant kind of a shot? Randy had a clear concept and vision of the entire film going in. He created a book on the film. It was really cool. He got us to really understand what the film, you know, how good it could be. The thing about Rennie, which is so great, is he storyboarded the picture shot for shot, uh, had that to refer to. He really wanted everything to sort of fit together. In the beginning, we have all the, all the candles going. And when Caleb walks in, just when he's walking past this thing, this is going to light. I talked about the script a lot with the actors. I showed them uh, my storyboards. I storyboard all the sequences so they can visualize it uh, better and get an idea of the tone and the feeling of the movie. It was so interesting because it filled in the gap for just about where this was going and his vision with it. Rennie's great. He's got such an energy about him. It's so rare to find, and he's just always on. He's always got this energy that just makes the set and the working environment so incredibly comfortable. Sometimes things don't go perfectly, and for that reason, I have this weapon. It's just very fun-loving, keeps everyone light, yet still still pushing him to go, and he keeps the, the atmosphere really cheerful. So it's very, very nice working with Rennie. At the end, you'll make a little bit of lightning when she's alone, okay? I think thrillers really uh, are constant in, in uh, film popularity, but uh, it's finding the right cinematographer that can uh, make an elegant, scary film. It was a very interesting project. It's the first time I do, like, horror kind of film, you know, scary films, and that's what, that was a good challenge also for me. I was very interested of, with uh, working with Rainy Arlen. He likes my creativity. He let me do, you know, a lot of things, and we have a very good teamwork on that film. It's great. It's really fun. That was good. Excellent. Camera was great, too. Now I'll go even more, like... Go a little crazy. Yeah. Or... Rennie and Pierre, that team is just so genius at uh, pulling these shots that are just absolutely gorgeous and mind-blowing. All of the shots are alive. They're not boring, straight on shots. He uses all different angles and all different ways of shooting. So I think that brings a lot more to the movie. Action. A big challenge was to really make a great shot in that short time that we have. So it took a lot of people to prepare a lot of sets. We lit three kilometers of forest at night. That's a lot of lighting and crew. It's very complicated. It's a complex organization. In terms of the way we are lighting the sets, the way we are shooting the scenes, I wanted to take the audience's hand and take them on this journey in a very deliberate way by choosing very particular kind of angles and telling the audience that this is the way you walk down a dark hallway, or this is the way you wake up from a nightmare, or this is the way you experience this action sequence. I really want them to be there. It's kind of tough, but everybody's just been so patient. I don't know, sometimes I'm amazed. I saw a lot of rain and mud, you know, I think there was one time we were shooting outside, it was raining. I see the poor camera guy, you know, he's like sinking in mud <laughs> as he's trying to hold the camera up. 
There was so much mud at one point. I think there was a puddle like up to her knees. We were working the dollies into the swamp and uh, it was like uh, fun. It was an interesting challenge to create a world that would be fascinating and dark and different, yet still grounded in reality. So our uh, script called for New England location. But I didn't want anything to feel completely real. I wanted every home and every schoolroom to be kind of a darker, different take on our normal lives. Montreal offers uh, a great sense of similitude to New England and to the Boston area. We really did lots of research and lots of scouting for all the different houses and homes and buildings in order to create a world that has its own feel, own look, own, own colors, own design. We spent a lot of time finding a school that really feels like New England, yet at the same time is very gothic and very special in its look, so it really grounds the movie in this style that we are trying to create. For me, it's interesting because like the locations becomes also part of the character. The imaginary world is a question of mood because we're doing a film that has a realistic world, okay? It's not a science fiction thing and it's not an underworld thing. It's more like subtle, which is very interesting. was really a little bit different from most horrors and thrillers because um, it had a lot of action in it and special effects and stunts. There are 485 visual effect shots that were created for this picture, which means roughly one in five shots was a visual effect shot. There are a driving force. They are also telling the story. Nowadays, obviously, we can do a lot more than, than years ago because the digital effects uh, make it possible to create almost any kind of a world. Of course, it has to be grounded in reality. But at the same time, these visual effects help us in creating certain action sequences and obviously the, the moments where we see these magical powers really working. There were certainly some things that were executed exactly as Randy storyboarded. But some of the effects developed in the course of uh, post-production. When Chase cast a spell on Sarah, I had the idea that maybe we could do something to make it more practical in some way. So why don't we have a spider crawl out between his fingers and crawl into her ear? And that was an example of an effect that really was not scripted, not shot, but you know, ended up in the picture. And I think uh, you know, it was a pretty good one. The sequence where Sarah basically wakes up to find a spider and it so becomes a big nightmare sequence. The real fun of that was to tr try to find a way to make each shot more horrific than the one before it. <laughs> visual effects support the story. That's what CG does well. My favorite scene is the shower scene that I did. There's something that breaks on the floor and, and I've been down and, and I don't know, but above me there's a floating dark warlock above me and I turn around and they're gone. So it's really, really creepy. Green screen, that was one of the uh, trickiest things for me. You just have to imagine you're know, like driving off a cliff, but really all you see is a green piece of paper in front of you. But once you get into it, once the guys and us start messing around in it, it was easier. It's definitely a challenge because you always have to remind yourself where you were before the green screen, when you were in the actual place, you know, and you have to remember where you were at then and match that. Some scenes to be able to, to shoot the storyboard like we want to shoot, it would be one day to set up one shot for the car to come there, have the camera to go around, it's extremely complex. It would cost a lot, a lot, a lot of money. So then, having a CG car, it's a driving force because it should look really cool and really fun. In the picture, we really tried to make things simple and in some, in some way as if they, they could exist in nature. The Powerball is a classic example. We are indeed that forever, trying to find something that would be appropriately epic. It was imperative to get that right, and they had you know, a specific idea of what they wanted, but getting to that place took quite a bit of time. But at the end of the day, I you know, actually was very, very pleased with how that sequence came out. 
one thing that is, is special about this film is that all the action is really done with the actors. We've had some great moments with the actors getting used to working on the wire rigs and being able to do some stunts that they never thought that they could do. Three, two, one, go! The fights, cable, guys flying, these are all challenge also when we shoot. We have created a wire system that is being used for the first time for a motion picture, which is a computerized flying system where we can really make these warlocks do these very exciting and rough and sometimes balletic moves. I never ask my actors to do anything that I wouldn't do. It's a device that has been built for the Cirque du Soleil. It's very technological. It's all computerized cabling, so you can program the movement of an actor so you can repeat it every take the same way. We've taken the actors and trained them for months on these rigs, and we can do it very safely and in a very controlled environment, yet give the audience really the exhilarating feeling of seeing the actors do it. Yeah, baby. It's always been a challenge and it's always been fun. I mean, how many times in, in one's life do you really get to be shot through the air at 17 feet per second? After like a month of rehearsing, we go into there with a lot of confidence. So, I mean, physically, it's not too much to ask for. It's a rush and a challenge, and it always helps the scene if you're doing it yourself. You can get those really honest reactions. We're learning how to fly to some extent. You're dealing with gravity, you know, on wires and whatnot, but you're learning how to, you know, balance your body. I used to be very afraid of heights before this, and now I'm all about it. I don't, I don't even know how it happened, but it's been an amazing experience, especially being so physical. I've never done anything this physical before. It's great. It's such an amazing feeling. It's such a rush and a sense of freedom. Doing something of this caliber, it's been incredibly gratifying. It's really cool doing a movie where you can feel like all the characters are just like your best friends and we've all become best friends on the show and it's just been a great time. I think what really unites all the actors and, and, and the crew as well is that we share a sense of humor and, and we, we really try to make it fun working together. It's, it's a lot of work and long hours. We really try to keep it so that it, we remember that this is our life and we are having fun and we are very privileged to be able to do it.